Hey everybody, today I'm doing a product review on the Battlefield in a Box Rivers. Um, this is uh, pre-painted tabletop terrain that is produced by Gale Force 9. Now I have three boxes here, each come with three rivers. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you exactly how they come to you in the box, but I'm also at the end of the video going to show how, with very little effort, how you can do some other things to them to really improve them. Um, and they are meant to be slightly improved. They give you some materials and I'll talk about that. Um, each one of these boxes cost me um, $30 Canadian, and so it's about $10 for a river section uh, a piece, 12 inches, which I think is actually a really good deal. Um, you know, we'll see more about that later when you see what you get for it. Um, but uh, I was told th these are produced in limited runs, production runs by Gale Force 9. They're not new at all. This is a relatively old product. It's been around, I think, since around 2010, so it's not a new product. But I believe they're produced in limited runs, and right now, currently, like the inventory that's out there at your local stores, which most people seem to have them in a lot of places, um, they're, they are widely distributed. Um, but I, I was told by a local gaming store that they are you can't order them um, as a supplier from Gale Force 9 at this time, and so until they decide to produce another run, the, the current inventory that's out there is all that's out there. Um, so if you really like these, you might want to consider picking them up. Um, and so, um, what I'm going to do is just show real quick uh, the back of the box. Each one of these comes with, and these are the three river expansions. They're not, I have island, fords, and forks. I don't have the basic just rivers, uh, bends I believe it's called, like it's just rivers. But as you'll see, each one of these boxes comes with basic river sections in addition to their highlighted item. So this one is called forks, and so you actually get a fork, but you also get two bendy rivers with it. And then this one here is called fords, and you get two sections that are sort of like regular river with areas that have fords through them, and then a, an actual regular river as well. And then lastly, on the other side, I won't turn it around, but you get the idea. You have that big island, and it's called Islands, um, and I'll be showing that train in a moment. Um, but then you get two sections that are regular rivers as well. And so I felt in when researching this that um, I could probably get away with these three boxes that have each sort of a specialty piece and then just have some river sections that come with it as well. So that's actually in some ways a really good idea. Um, <clears throat> or a really good value um, because you get to essentially get multi uses out of them and some regular rivers in your specialty set. What I'll do now is I'll pan back and show you the contents of one of the boxes and everything that comes in it. So here I have the river expansion fork set unboxed. Um, as you can see, perhaps right away, is that when you look at the front cover of the box, it does appear quite a bit lighter than what you actually get um, in, you know, the product. It, it, you know, it can depend on lighting. It probably did have really bright lights. Um, it is possible they may have treated the top a little bit, just as they put lots of flock on this product. Um, as well, it doesn't come flocked. Now, they give you a bag with this much flock, essentially, which is very little. Um, it might be enough to use sparingly on one of the river sections, but it really is definitely not enough to do what you sort of see in the picture here for all of your, your sections. Um, most of us have flock. That, that isn't really a huge deal to me, um, but uh, that is just something to point out in case you're buying it with the intention of utilizing the flock that comes in the box. Now, when you actually uh, get the product, it comes in really nice packaging. Um, it basically comes in styrofoam pre-cut um, with a little sliver too, so you can actually pull it out kind of easily. Um, they, they've cut this essentially here. Let's see if I can move it. Yeah, just slightly move it here just to, to do that. I will probably use these to store them, and so in some ways you get a little bit of a storage solution <laughs> in your packaging um, because it is really, really good packaging. And so, okay, so I'm going to show the rivers as well. So I will zoom in a bit here. So here I have the river laid out. It covers pro approximately 36 inches. I haven't measured it, um, but it covers really good distance along the table here for just one box. Um, the product is made of a 
rubber-like material that has, uh, essentially it's a sheet of rubber with, as you can see, some molds put on the top to, to actually create this sort of side of the, uh, the river, or um, I should say the edges. Um, it's, it's about a two-tone style paint. There is some sort of a finish on the top, like maybe a, a matte kind of look, maybe a, a light gloss applied. Um, it has uh, a dark blue, and then as well it has some light blue just where the edges are, um, just to show where like it's more shallow, or where the, perhaps the water is running faster. Um, there is an extremely light dry brush applied. And so there are stones in certain spots that are dry brush as well as some texture on the side of the river. Um, yeah, so I think it is slightly flexible, which is nice, um, but it not too flexible where you know it, it's the product's going to break because it is sort of a, a hard product. It's not like a s silicone or anything like that. So um, I'll show the scale and what it sort of looks like with a couple of things next to it. So here are two 28 millimeter Warlord models for the French Indian War, and as well there is a unpainted Warlord canoe. Um, that's a two-person canoe, um, and so the river actually has plenty of room. You know, I think even gunboats and larger canoes, which will be a little bit wider, will still fit because generally speaking they don't exponentially get wider in the middle, they usually get much wider in length and so I do think that these rivers will be very good for those um, style of craft in 28 millimeter and although the battlefield in a box as I understand is primarily designed for flames of war many of those products are marketed specifically for it I do think in this instance with the rivers that they work actually quite good um, for 28 millimeter with these figs so um, I guess I'll give my sort of opinion on the product uh, before I show what I've done side by side to spruce them up a bit. So from a quality standpoint, I think these are actually pretty decent. Um, when you look at use on the tabletop and how I think they'll hold up, because it's sort of a rubberized product that has a little bit of give but not too much. Um, I think that actually it will hold up very well on the table. I do think that if you don't do anything to the blue um, at all, like apply more gloss or something, that there is a possibility that it, they could get scratched. Um, but from a physical, because that can be touched up and painted, you know, that's not the end of the world. But from a physical getting destroyed, like breaking it, I don't think you're going to have an issue if you take any sort of reasonable amount of care with them. Um, I do think the quality of the molds, the, the width of the river and like what you're getting for, uh, in this instance is actually very good. Um, from an aesthetics point of view, I think they're pretty decent. I think when you compare them to many other products that are out there at a similar price range, in some cases they're light years beyond some of the other products. In other cases, you know, I, I think um, I, w I would put these at the top, to be honest, uh, towards the top from what I've seen. And so from an aesthetics point of view, is from what you're just getting right out of the package, it's actually pretty decent. I think most people will recognize this as a river. Um, you know, it's only for the, those of us that maybe want to really blend it into our table much further and add a lot more detail that there may, may take issue with it. But for what you're paying um, to get a starting point at $30 for three of these pieces, you, they're really launching you really far into your process of, of making your specialized river with all these extra details by just getting you this, this template, the base coating two-tone color and the first dry brush. It, it really does bring you to a point where you don't have to do that much more to make these look really good. Now, from a cost perspective, from um, you know what I, what I think as far as value, I would rate these really high um, for a lot of the reasons I just said, but you know, I've sort of alluded to it already, but really $10 uh, Canadian for each section or $30 for the pack. Really, this gets you very far. I mean, one of these packs in many sort of smaller scale games could really um, get you pretty far. Um, let alone two of them is probably all you really need. And I had purchased three. I don't expect that I would actually ever need more than that necessarily. Um, unless I start playing on, let's say, 8 foot by 10 foot or um, 4 foot by 8 foot tables and things. Um, I think this is actually going to be get me really far for my needs. Um, 
so that's what I would say as far as how I would rate these. I, I rate them very well. Um, I'm going to come back and just show what I've done to one of the boxes to try to improve them and make them blend into my table a little bit better and to be a little bit happier with them. And I will actually tell you how I did them with each um, thing I've used, each the materials and such. Be right back. So what I have here now is the island section kit. Now what I have done um, to improve, in my opinion, these the kit is extremely easy and took me very little time at all. And as a matter of fact, I could do a lot more. But my opinion really was is that I wanted something that was sort of pretty good right out of the box and that I didn't have to put a lot of work into. And that's exactly what I did. If I want to, I can add shrubs and lots more detail and even I could ripple the water with some water effects and do other things but I decided to stop at a certain point and just say this is what I'm happy with right out of the box to be able to play games with so um, I'll show these a little closer up so what I primarily did is I first dry brushed the sides with a light dry brush or I should say maybe a heavy dry brush of um, Citadel's Carax Stone. So essentially a lighter brown than what was originally dry brushed. And I did that across all of the the beds on each side of the whole model. Um, after doing that, um, I applied um, sand and I just used just Citadel fine sand and with a glue, with a, I guess a white glue with a little bit of um, water mixture. Just select spots throughout the model. I would say that I did go a little heavy in certain places but I would say adding this sand was one of the better details as far as really popping and making it look quite a bit different and a bit more contrast. After adding the sand and then applying a second layer of a, a highly watered down glue um, that will sink into sort of the uh, grains of the sand and just hold it a little bit better after the first application, I then used a flock that was very similar to the flock that was in the bag that came with the product. So I purposely used that. Now, at a distance on camera, I don't really see it as much through the viewfinder, but if you go up close, you can see that I did add a fair bit of flock. Um, not overwhelming so, and that's really to your taste, but I do find it blends into the edges of the table pretty nicely. After getting that um, drying and just making sure that all of the um, flock material and, and grains of sand that are just sort of, they get and collect in the middle when you're doing all this kind of work. I was very careful not to get any glue on the, the blue area. Well, I made sure, you know, I dusted that off really well. And then what I used on the actual water was um, a Minwax polyurethane. Uh, this is the fast drying product. I only did one light coat. Now you could take it further and do several coats. Um, I don't know if you get too thick whether that will affect your bendability of the river and whether you, you know that it could crack or something but so far just applying the light coat um, I think that it makes it pop a little bit more so you have your regular piece and you see it's got a bit more of a matte finish there and it's a bit darker when you put it on the table With the Minwax, it's a little bit more of a, a glare on the water, as if like light is sort of shining on it, and so I quite liked that. It also will provide an extra layer of protection when you have your minis on them, uh, on it, and to prevent it from scratching. So I thought that was quite good. After that, I ended up um, just touching up the rocks a bit, and I just painted the rocks on the side, two different tones. I used a beige and a uh, light gray um, just to make them look just a little bit better, a um, little bit more varied. And then I used an Agrex earth shade just on the stones themselves. So in general, like that really took me very little time. It was extremely easy to do. And personally, I think that it's actually made it much better. Um, I, I'm quite happy with it. Just And for the level of effort put in, um, it was just a high, high return, I think, um, on very little extra work on them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review today, and, and it's helpful if you are considering adding rivers to your table in the near future. Um, and thanks very much. Take care.